you've got questions, we've got answers. We have the man to answer them, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of do, 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 Ask the Hammer. <laughs> I like it. We're going to have to make that the new intro. I, that's yeah, good. I was thinking like Jaws, like sort of like, but that, yeah, I don't know right. if that would be wow. a good thing. All right, now I'm a little worried about what question this is going to be. <laughs> well, the question I have from a reader uh, is an easy one for you, I'm sure. It goes like this. Should I convert my term life insurance to a permanent life insurance policy? Oh, this is good. You're right. It is easy. The answer is maybe. Done. What's the next question you have, Bob? Thanks. <laughs> Nailed it again. <laughs> yeah, I, this is one where, it, it, you know, term life insurance is a tool. Permanent life insurance is a tool. At the risk of, uh, you know, uh, at the risk of, of being a little silly here with our, our theme, you know, a hammer is one tool and a screwdriver is another. If you start a project and you need a hammer and later in the project you need a screwdriver, you should put the hammer down and pick up the screwdriver. If you start a project with a hammer and you finish the project needing a hammer, getting the screwdriver does you no good. And, and so now with that said, let's talk about how this applies to the actual life insurance conversion. For those who are not aware what a conversion is, what are we even talking about in the first place? With a lot of term policies, they will give you an ability to change that term policy into a permanent policy, uh, either for the length of the policy or for at least some period of time. And the critical thing here is you can do that without evidence of insurability. So in most cases, when you go to apply for insurance, there's either some questions, there may be some medical examinations, they may request your medical history, depends upon the dollar amount you're seeking, right? The the greater the dollar amount, the more uh, the more background research the insurance company is likely to do into your into your health for obvious reasons. They're on the hook for a bigger amount if you die. So the you know the the situation might be you're 20 years old and you reach 40 years, or let me make it more realistic. You're you're 30 years old and you buy a term policy for 20 years, and you're now 50 years old and you're deciding, do I want to convert this to a permanent policy? Well, let's just run through a couple of scenarios. Scenario one. You're in awesome health. You've got kids, but they're not out of the house yet. Maybe another 10 or 15 years until they're done with college, settled on their own, et cetera. Well, if you're in good health, then having a term policy is probably still your less least expensive option, your cheapest option. And so what you probably want to do is just if you need insurance, if you value that protection element, the tool that provides protection, go get some more term. Let your current, you know, before your current term elapses, you know, lapses, but before the end, go seek new insurance and get a new term policy for another five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is, however long you want that. Now, another possibility is you're not in such great health at the end of that time, right? Maybe uh, you, you, you know, you've got, uh, you've had some significant health issues since the last time, whether it be diabetes, heart issues, cancer. And so getting a new policy might be difficult or at the very minimum might be very costly, What you can do then, then, then yes, it might make sense to take your existing term policy and convert it uh, because you're not really doing it so much for the fact that you want permanent coverage, you're doing it for the fact that it might be the least expensive option or the only option at that point, given your earlier or given your, your medical history over the last 20 years. Again, the term conversion allows you to make a policy permanent without evidence of insurability. But if you're healthy, the cheaper option is still going to be term insurance. Because when you do this, let's say you're 30 years old and you bought the term policy and it allows you to convert until you're 50. If at 49, you convert, if you got a great rating early on, you get the great rating automatically at 49, but you still pay the cost of a permanent policy of someone who's 49 years old, right? So it's not like you get to treat it as though you bought it when you were 30. You get to treat it as though you bought it at your current age, but using the health evaluation you had when you first bought your policy. So in short, should you convert your, your, your current policy? First question I have is why? What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your basis for needing that coverage? If you're looking for maximum protection for the lowest dollar amount and you're reasonably healthy, 
term is probably still your best option. If you're unhealthy now, uh, or much more unhealthy than you were when you first got your policy, maybe converting might make sense because it's either too expensive or you just can't get insurance otherwise, period. And finally, maybe you don't need your coverage anymore for purposes of protection. Maybe you're just looking to use life insurance as a way to uh, perhaps have cash that is uh, you know, like a bond replacement vehicle, something like that. Well, if you're, if you're in a high tax bracket, that can make sense in certain situations. Again, particularly if you had a great health rating early on so that your cost of insurance inside the policy is lower. So unfortunately, Bob, no, no simple yes, no, but we've covered a couple of the, you know, the questions that go into it. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, this, this question and your answer sort of, you know, is, is, is emblematic of so much of what happens in personal finance, which is it depends and it depends on your facts and circumstances. Mm-hmm. But if you have some sort of um, guidelines around what to ask and what to think about, then that's the best answer of all. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's why personal financial advice is so different than education, right? Education is here's some information, but it doesn't necessarily help you to figure out what applies to you. And look, here might be a great example of someone who, if they have an advisor, might want to work with them on this question. But even if they don't, maybe this is a particularly significant question for that individual, they could reach out and find someone who works on an hourly basis or a project basis and just say, this is the question at hand. What do you think? And you know, maybe it takes two hours worth of work and you have to pay someone 500 or a thousand dollars, but you, you make sure you get the right answer for, for that particular situation. All right, Jeffrey, once again, nailed it. Thanks, That's Bob. So it's always, uh, it's always, this was a good one. You know, I, I, the, the, it depends questions are, are oftentimes the most interesting because there's so many different ways we can approach this. And I mean, look, we could spend the next hour doing a, a, a discourse on whether to convert a term policy or not, but hopefully at least there's a high level. Uh, if you have more questions for us, well, we want to hear them. Let us know, reach out to us here at ask the hammer at Buckingham group.com. Again, give us an email right here at ask the hammer at buckinghamgroup.com.